the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Join me in prayer. On my heart, imprint your image, blessed Jesus, King of grace, that life's riches, cares, and pleasures never may your work erase. Let the clear inscription be, Jesus crucified for me, is my life my hope's foundation, and my glory and salvation. Amen. I tell you, I do have to stop picking Gerhard hymns before my sermons because my words never will match those of the blessed Paul Gerhard. But uh, we'll give a go at it. Death is the inevitable consequence of sin. All of us will die. Elder, infant, man, woman. Death comes to us all. You can't prevent it. <clears throat> Through the miracles of modern medicine, diet, and exercise, you can postpone it. But eventually, death will find you. Have you ever thought of your death? How you're going to die? Will it be a long and painful death in some hospital room or nursing home? Or maybe an unexpected, surprising death at the peak of your life? <clears throat> Will you die with guilt of things that you did? Old, or will you die young with still too many things left to do? Will your family mourn and not be able to carry on? Or worse, will they be happy that your burden isn't around anymore? <clears throat> will you question God's grace, abandon all hope, and live in fear of the mysterious? Will you listen to the whispers of the devil that say, why is God doing this? Why doesn't God take away heart attacks, cancer, and Alzheimer's? Why doesn't he rid humanity of car wrecks, plane crashes, and natural disasters? <clears throat> if God were loving, wouldn't he let everyone live to 103 and die peacefully in their sleep? Death is the inevitable consequence of sin for it is the wrath of God against sinful man. What do you do when you ponder death? Do you live in fear of the mysterious? Or do you subsist as if death doesn't exist? Do you ignore it? Or do you fear it more than God himself? Either choice is wrong, for it breaks the first commandment that you fear, love, and trust in God above all things. Repent. Death will come for you, and you know not the day or the hour. This world has no solution to the absolute problem of death. <clears throat> Only Jesus answers death. As our gospel lesson says, while he was saying these things to them, behold, a ruler came in and knelt before him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. The ruler knew that Jesus alone could bring his daughter back to life. Only Jesus has authority to create life where there is only death. Only Jesus has the authority to create life. He raised that little girl in opposition to the laughs and ridicules of the mourners. He brought her back to the land of the living, for Jesus is life. Only Jesus can conquer death. And he raised that girl right then and there. So why doesn't he do that for us today then? Why doesn't Jesus stop all death and bring all our loved ones back to life? Why doesn't he just take away cancer, take away 
heart attacks, take away lung disease, take away everything that plagues humanity that causes death. Why doesn't he just bring everyone back to life that we loved and cherished? Dead husbands, dead wives, dead children, and parents. Well, because Jesus isn't Dr. Frankenstein. Jesus doesn't prevent death, nor does he bring monsters back from the dead. No, he overcomes death. But he doesn't do this our way. He does it his way. He doesn't overcome death by living forever like some mythological demigod. No, Jesus lives forever because he died. This is the backwards paradox that is Christianity. What other religion would claim that there is life only in death? Jesus took the sin of the woman with the discharge of blood, the sin of the ruler, the sin of the daughter, of the apostles, of you, of the whole world, and died the death of all on the cross. On the cross, Jesus purchased life in exchange for his precious and priceless death. On the cross, Jesus died in order that death may no longer have dominion over you. Death no longer is tyrant over creation, for Christ has died to it once and for all. Jesus is Lord over death. He received the fullness of the Father's wrath on the cross and there died in your stead. He is now Lord over death because he did not remain in his earthly tomb. No, the Father is pleased with his sacrifice and raised him from the dead and gives him all authority in heaven and on earth of both the living and the dead. He revealed this by raising the little girl back to life. And he did indeed raise her back to life in time and in space. This isn't some neat little story that teaches us that we just have to deal with our problems in life and Jesus will make everything better. Like some evangelical man will tell you on television, that's what this is about. No, this message is the most comforting message we can possibly have. For Jesus is Lord. Jesus raised that little girl and he does the same thing for you today, just not on your own time. For you will breathe your last breath. And I don't know about you, but to me it's terrifying when you think of it. This isn't the most popular little theme to have for a sermon. Most people don't wake up on Sunday morning, have their coffee and their omelets or their French toast and go, man, I want to hear about death for 15 minutes today. It'll make my day just go better. I know what mine is. The most terrifying thought I have of death is just not being able to breathe. Just all of a sudden my breath is taken. My chest caves in, and I just can't breathe. Try as I might. People standing around me wondering what's going on, telling me what to do to breathe, and I can't. That thought of our own end, the devil loves reminding us of it. He would love nothing more than for that image to be ingrained in my conscience all the days of my life and to worry constantly about eternity. But Christ overcomes that terror. Christ overcomes that fear. For death is not the end. For you who are baptized into Christ, death cannot end your gladness, for baptism has the strength divine to make eternal life Yours. Death no longer reigns over you, for your sin no longer condemns you. As St. Paul declared, He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of His beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. 
Death is still here, but no longer is it the end, but the portal to life immortal. You who are in Christ, forgiven your sin, baptized, death has already come to you. It is no longer you who lives, but Christ who lives within you. Death will always trouble you. Death will always terrify you, but it will never again overcome you. I leave you with the words of St. Paul Gerhard that say, Now in Christ death cannot slay me, though it might day and night trouble and dismay me. Christ has made my death a portal from the strife of this life to his joy immortal. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.